Most of us, as I mentioned yesterday, with Allah al-Hamd, most of us are born Muslim. So we didn't have to go out searching for Islam. Islam came to us on a silver platter with Allah al-Hamd. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Today, alhamdulillah, as you know, I believe if my math is right, we're on the 24th night. Is that right? 24th night, inshallah. We know that with 24, we got about six days left. So now it's grind time. Don't get tired now. Because we still have six days left. And I know it's very cliche to say, and I know you've heard this many, many times in your lives, but wallahi, those that we have buried before this Ramadan of 2024, they, they've heard it as well. And they heard that saying is, it could be your last Ramadan, so act upon it accordingly. I'm pretty sure those that we have buried in pray janazah for in this masjid, last year, when they, that Ramadan, they heard it too. They heard from their Imam, the Shaykh, whatever that's talking, and they heard this could be your last Ramadan. Wallahi, that was your last Ramadan. So this year, Wallahu ta'ala, as you know the circumstances in the world today, as you can see in the situation of the Ummah today, who knows that this could be your last Ramadan. There may be someone here sitting in this very masjid, brother or sister, that's listening to the very words I'm saying, and it's going to be your last Ramadan. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He preserves all of us and allows us to see many more Ramadans in our lives, Allahumma Alameen. I wanted to just, you know, focus on one particular part of the surah that that we are reciting today. And for those that know, and I'm pretty sure I would say maybe 70% of the Muslim Ummah knows this surah. And if they don't know this surah, then they at least know the, the importance of this surah. That is the surah of Yaseed. And we know that as Muslims, we know the nickname of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Yasi. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is talking, referring as some scholars say, he is referring to his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says Yasi. Many things are taking place in this particular surah. There are many themes in this particular surah. But the reason why this surah was revealed was for one reason. And there was a Qurashi or a Quraysh or a Quraysh member that was a non-Muslim. So on every time, side note, anytime you mention a Qurashi or someone that was from the Quraysh, you have to highlight if they were Muslim or non-Muslim. Because a lot of times when we as Muslims study the seerah, when we hear Quraysh, we think automatically they're bad. Don't do that. Because the Prophet وسلم, himself was from the Quraysh. Abu Bakr عنه, himself was from the Quraysh. Umar himself was from the Quraysh. Ali was from the Quraysh. Rahman was from the Quraysh. Likewise, Abu Jahad was from the Quraysh. Abu Lahab was from the Quraysh. Umayy ibn Khalaf was from the Quraysh. So you can see here that yes, you have the good Quraysh as the Muslims, then you have the bad Quraysh. So we have to highlight that you're talking about the Kuffar of the Quraysh. In this particular incident, one of the Kuffar of the Quraysh came to the Prophet وسلم, and tried to insult him. And he tried to insult him and make a mockery out of his deen, i.e. Islam, our deen today. He grabbed a bone on the ground and he said to, to the Prophet wasallam, Is Allah going to be able, if your God, Allah, is yuhi, is he going to give life? And he crumbled the bone in front of Rasulullah wasallam. So he crumbled it in front of his eyes and he crumbled it and it fell on the ground. And he said, is your Lord going to be able to bring this back to life? This is what he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala responds to that non-Muslim, that disbeliever in him of the Quraysh. And Allah says, وَضَرَبَنَا And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala brings forth an example. وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَ Yet Allah Subh'anaHu, he says, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, that person, which was his name was Ubay, that person brings up an example to you, Ya Rasulullah, وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ and he forgot how he was created. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the entire surah of Surah Yasin speaks about many things. 
Number one, it speaks about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the oneness of Allah and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing. That small human being that questioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he grabbed that bone, little did he know the very hands he used to crush that bone who was given to who? By, by who? Was it given to him by his mom? Was it given to him by his dad? Who built those very five fingers that he was able to crush those very, that very bone with his hands? It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is what Surah Yasin speaks about. Primarily is the monotheistic or monotheism, Tawheed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is to speak about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How easy it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create you and I today. And all of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles us in the Quran many, many times. It's also in Surah Yasin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us a nuqfa. Many times in the Quran. He calls us female and male discharge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you want to think yourself as, as very high and mighty. You want to be arrogant. You want to feel better that you're, you're better than a person sitting next to you because perhaps your skin complexion or you make more money than that person or you're stronger or more younger or you have you know this qualities and that degree or whatever it may be. You may think that you are better, but all of you come from a nukfa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles us. All of you come from male discharge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles that, that, that servant of his that disbelieved in him from the, from the Quraysh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you come from nothing. But yet you have the nerve to say to my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is your Lord capable of bringing the dead back to life? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the end of Surah Yaseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the very famous saying, إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to do, understand that when the creation of the heavens and the earth, and you included as human beings, understand that this was very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It did not make him exhausted at all, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا As Ayatul Kursi says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it doesn't phase him, it doesn't tire him to preserve the heavens and the earth. You, O oh weak human being, that is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Ramadan, you are nothing compared to the creation of the heavens and the earth. Is anyone here, including Adam alayhi salam, bigger than the earth? Is anyone here, including the people of Ad, the people of Hud, man ashadu minna quwwa, they used to say, who is stronger than us? Is there anyone bigger than the earth? But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth. Sometimes you'll find non-Muslims, and it's, it's very unfortunate that you'll find Muslims thinking the same mentality as that. And that is that when they think about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they forget wa They forget themselves on how they were created. If they want to use science or whatever it may be, they say, oh, we are just a part of the DNA or whatever it may be. Okay, then trace back that DNA from your father to your grandfather to your great grandfather, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on, all the way until Adam Okay, how did Adam was created? If you want to ask that question, that simple answer is Ida Arada Shaytan. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants something, all He needs to say is Kun Fayakun. So, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that Lord and is speaking in, in Surah Yaseen about the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, understand, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we remain grateful to Him. Because every single day when we are sleeping in our beds, we wake up saying, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhim nushur, that famous dua that we are encouraged to memorize. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for the one that took our lives when we were asleep. None of us, dear brothers and sisters, have the privilege and the power to turn off our hearts before we sleep, like how we turn off our lights or how we close and lock our doors. Our hearts don't work like that. It pumps every single day and we are just one pump away from leaving this dunya, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We are just one slip away from leaving this dunya. But yet, who is the one that is in control of all of our hearts? It is not your proper diet and your exercise and your fasting. It is not your proper health and what you do. It is Allah, Jalla Jalla. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in full ultimate control. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yaseen, He brings a parable, He brings an example of ships. When the ship and the water and the boat that's, that's, that's in the water, who is controlling the waves and steering that ship? Do you think it's from you and your technology? All the technology you see, Elon Musk with his Tesla, every type of technology you, you may find, the iPhones you have, the phones you have, who taught human beings this type of skill? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles the believer and he humbles his creation and tells us all that we were all from Mutfa. So remember that, dear brothers and sisters. Stay humble, especially in these last 10 days of Ramadan. Cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell Him, Jalla Jalalu, that you are faqeeh, that you are in dire need of His help. This is why there's a two different type of interpretation. There's faqeeh and there's miskeeh. Both mean poor. But we are called fuqara ila Allah. We are called poor, not masakeeh ila Allah. Miskeen are majority, I would say 50% of this masjid. Not trying to disrespect anybody, but miskeen would be 50% of this masjid. What do I mean by this? Miskeen is someone that has a job, but lives paycheck to paycheck. Now you're nodding your head, oh, that's me. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. It's hard to pay my bills. You are miskeen. Don't worry about that. The feed is even worse. The feed is, they wake up in the morning, they're not so sure how to feed their family at night. That's the feed. You are from the feed and Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to move, let alone flinch your eye and blink your eye and pump your heart if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will not be able to stand here this very moment right now giving you this talk if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are faqeed. When you make dua, humble yourself and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I am in dire need of you. Not just for your forgiveness, but for your mercy and for your infinite barakah and your help and your assistance, ultimately in this dunya and in the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these blessed nights of Ramadan that every time we raise our hands and ask you for your help, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you automatically and instantaneously accept our dua in the best way that you understand, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullahu khayr. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.